Today we're looking at the latter half of Proverbs chapter 12. And yesterday I made the statement that there are very few running themes in, in each passage in Proverbs, but uh, there, there is one prevailing theme in the second half of chapter 12 in Proverbs, and it has to do with the tongue or speech, and not only our tongue and our speech, but where that comes from, and that's out of our heart. Um, Jesus said, out of, out, of the, out of the heart of man come the abundant of issues of life, he said, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that makes him unclean, but it's what comes out of his mouth because what comes from his mouth comes from his heart. And so I think our prayer may not be necessarily God guard my lips, but would be God change my heart, right? Because I recognize whether or not I express it verbally or not, it begins in the heart, those thoughts, those attitudes, those um, Thoughts about other people, thoughts about the way I view the world, thoughts about the way that I uh, see things. And the prayer really is, is that that what Christ has given us and that we have been saved and been given a new heart, that our heart will be transformed. And out of that, the, the mouth will be transformed and the mind will be transformed. And so let's begin picking up in verse 15. I'm just going to read these verses, and then I want to look at a few verses in First Peter. As the Lord led me there during my quiet time this morning as I was thinking about my heart and my mouth. He says in verse 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Um, James should be, be slow to speak and quick to listen. And one who has wisdom, a wise man, is, is one who will listen to advice rather than um, running his mouth or trying to express what his thoughts are. He closes his mouth and listens and, and, takes, in, and takes in advice. The contrast to that, the fool uh, is really amazed by his own words. He, his own flattery um, uh, seems to... to um, boost his ego. Verse 16, the vexation of a fool is known at once. Why is it known at once? Because when the fool uh, is is uh, corrected or rebuked, they're usually going to chatter their lips. He said, the vexation of a fool is known once, but a prudent ignores an insult. That's hard to ignore an insult, isn't it? My little self-defense mechanism wants to jump up and defend me every time I hear an insult whether it's an insult that's verbally from somebody else or it's an insult of somebody, something I may take offense to that's posted on social media or an article I'm reading. Uh, and listen to what he says here. A, a prudent man, a wise man, a man who's managed in his life, his heart is managed, his tongue is managed, a prudent one ignores an insult. Whoever speaks the truth gives honest evidence, but a false witness utters deceit. And so here uh, Solomon's beginning to talk about um, uh, that, that the heart that, that might be deceitful. It usually where there's a deceitful heart, lies are not going to be very far behind a deceitful heart. Verse 18, there is one whose rash words are like swords that are thrust, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Rather than criticism, there's edification. Rather than uh, a, a, a sniped word, there's words of encouragement. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but those who plan peace have joy. No ill befalls the righteous, but the wicked are filled with trouble. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But those who act faithfully are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims folly. The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Anxiety in a man's heart weighs him down, but a good word makes him glad. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of wicked leads them astray. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game, but the diligent man will get precious wealth. In the path of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. 
as I was thinking and meditating on the tongue this morning and the heart, uh, I was led to kind of cross-reference that to 1 Peter, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, where as Peter's writing to a suffering church who, who are facing persecution in so many different various ways, he encourages them uh, to, to not lash out but to walk in the likeness of Christ with a, with a meek heart and a humble heart and not giving response. Listen to what he says. He says, finally, all of you brothers, have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless for this you are called that you may obtain a blessing. For, and then he quotes Psalm 34 here, he says, Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and the eyes are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And let me encourage the body of Christ today. I, 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 I think in this time, maybe more than I've ever seen it in my life, uh, there's such division in our country. There's such division over um, issues that, uh, that, that, are, that are probably serious issues, no doubt. But, but the encouragement to the believer is to, is to take on the opposite spirit of what the world may take on. Here he says that Peter says that when, when, when evil is done to us, when evil, evil is spoken to us, when we're reviled, rather than coming back and lashing back into that or back at that person, whether it be a person in face-to-face -face or a person on Facebook or a person on Twitter or whatever, rather than coming back in that spirit, come in the opposite spirit, uh, having a humility of mind, he says. And I want to encourage us... Um, don't don't feed into what the world and the enemy would want us to do. And that's to lash back with the same kind of evil heart and spirit that the world exhibits. Rather, Jesus calls us to not return insult with insult. He calls us to turn the other cheek. Um, and someone said to me the other day when I was talking to them about this, they said, you know, I, I'm just stating truth. And I said, there's nothing wrong with stating truth. But in the way that we state truth has a great bearing on whether or not that truth is received. You see, I, I like you. Um, when somebody confronts me in truth and in love and in the right spirit, it's a lot easier for me to receive what they have to say than when they come at me. Although it may be the truth, the way that they approach me in that has a great bearing on whether or not I'm able to receive that truth and there's effective change because of that truth. So um, season your words with salt. Season your fingers with salt. And rather than striking back um, in a way that Solomon says is the way that a fool does, have wisdom and have love and have patience and have words of encouragement and exhortation. I want to remind you again of something I said. My dad used to say this a lot. My dad used to always say, silence speaks volumes. And sometimes we're speaking so loud that others can't even hear us. Um, but a kind word, the Bible says, turns away wrath. And so I just want to encourage us. Um, let's be Christ-like in the way that we address each other, not only personally, face-to-face, -face, but let's be Christ-like the way we address each other through social media, digital platforms, and all the like. That's a word of encouragement today. And for some, it may be a word of correction or a word of rebuke, but please receive it in the right spirit and the right heart. Um, we're to exemplify and magnify Christ in everything that we do. And um, there's no excuse to do anything other than that, regardless of what platform we might be using. Let's love, let's heap burning embers of love, as James says, on our enemy's head. And they'll be won over by that. I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you, that his face will shine on you. I look forward to seeing you uh, tomorrow morning as we do our devotion again together. Men, I want to remind you, make plans to be at our man church 
tomorrow evening, 6.30 p.m. Women are Catalyst Women's event uh, Friday night at 7 p.m. Both of those events are, are not just events. They're a time to worship. They're a time to seek the Lord and meet Him and hear from Him. I pray the Lord blesses you. Pray that God would give you an opportunity today to plant a seed in somebody's heart for the gospel, to cultivate a seed maybe that's already been planted there, or if God would so grace us by allowing us to participate with Him as he saves someone. Oh man, wouldn't that be a great day if we were able to witness that? Let's pray and ask God to let us do that. And let's be intentional and attentive to the Holy Spirit as he leads us. I pray the Lord's blessings on you. Have a great day.